this up just a little bit. Um, so I think this is actually not these guys' first time at the Open Up Hack Night as presenters. The last time was, I want to say, a year and a half ago when you had just launched the map, uh, the new Chicago Public Schools locator. I don't know, is this part of your talk? Or? No. Oh, no. Okay, great. No. <laughs> so, uh, so it's really great. He's, so we, we got connected to these guys uh, through uh, a person named Alex Sobel, who is the former, I believe, social media director for CPS. Yes. And he saw some of the cool work that was coming out of his community, reached out to me and said, hey, like we want to make a map for <coughs> local school council elections. And then that sort of whole conversation with these guys and eventually led to a complete overhaul of their map for finding uh, Chicago, for looking up where, what Chicago public school you uh, your kid can go to. So these guys have done some really cool stuff uh, at CPS. They, I'm really happy to see that they've continued that work and are continuing to broaden the kind of things that they're working on. So um, one thread that is common in not just the Chicago scene, but I guess nationally in the open gov scene is the topic of procurement, uh, which is kind of a boring topic and one that a lot of people like to talk about. I've talked about it a little bit before. Um, it's basically governments and, and, and municipalities spending money on vendors to purchase technology is, is the thread that we're talking about and how there's some problems with that. That's kind of boring. You know what's way cooler? is to talk about the awesome work that people inside these organizations, these institutions, can do without having to hire outside help. So I am very happy to uh, turn it over to these guys. So Jay and Ted, thank you. All right. Um, thank you for having me. Uh, I'm very excited to be here. Um, before I start, I just wanted to introduce my team. Uh, so Ted Kanji. Uh, if you can stand real quick and just wave. Um, so Ted, and then Matt Real next to him. So um, these are the guys that kind of put together what we're going to talk about today. Um, there's a few other folks involved as well, but this is really the core group. And um, like like uh, Derek said, about a year and a half ago, we um, we built out our new school locator using Google Maps based on some code that Derek actually wrote some open source code, and we really liked the idea, and he really kind of helped us, uh, kind of inspired us really to do something a little bit more than what we thought we could do. And um, we launched our school locator, um, we, we presented it to this group, we got a lot of great feedback from the group on how to make it better, and we actually in, in, uh, implemented some of those design changes right before we launched it. So we kind of gave them a preview, and um, today, you know, we're, we're very open to your feedback and suggestions, what you see today is a work in progress. It's not perfect, but it's a lot better than where it was a year ago. And um, we'd love to hear how we can make it even better. So um, just let us know. We're very open to that. So um, I have some slides uh, that I'm going to go through. And I have my notes on my phone. So if I'm looking at my device, I'm not checking Twitter. <laughs> so just bear with me. Um, so let's just do this. So. We're going to cover a few things today. So we'll talk about cps.edu, the history of our website, our web presence app in the organization. Uh, we'll highlight some of the new features of the site. Uh, we'll go through some stats. Uh, we'll talk about some project highlights. And then we'll talk about what we're focused on next. Um, I'm going to try to keep it to about 10 minutes and give you guys a chance to ask questions. Um, <clears throat> so uh, this is some screenshots of basically our website evolving since 2000. So back in 2000, we had our first um, website that was built on a content management system. Um, and we had, uh, this was the design, this is what it looked like. In 2008, we did another re redesign of our website. We implemented a, a content management system and really focused on improving the nav, um, focusing on key stories, and making information um, accessible by different um, different groups such as parents, students, and community. And then um, in 2014, in, in August, we launched our mobile device friendly website, uh, CPS.edu mobile. Um, this is what it looks like today. Um, if you haven't seen it on your mobile device, check it out. We think it's pretty cool. Um, a lot of the inspiration for us going mobile also came from this group. So one of the things we learned a year and a half ago was about Twitter Bootstrap. And um, some of the technology that we use to build the site today is based on Twitter Bootstrap. We're very much interested in open source um, and, and leveraging software that exists today and not spending money. We don't have a lot of money to spend at CPS, 
Um, so we're always looking for ways to do cool stuff without having to invest in software. So, um, so yeah. So, <clears throat> so I'm just going to breeze through these because you kind of got an idea. Um, one of the other things that Derek touched on was um, basically this idea of spending money to build software. And um, back in 2008, when we redesigned the website, I was I was an employee back then. I was involved in that project. We basically hired a, a company to come in and rebrand our site and develop it. And we we partnered with offshore consultants in India to build that design. And it was very expensive. It was like a half a million dollar investment. Um, and there was a lot of challenges around getting that done. Um, this latest redesign we did in-house. We didn't spend any money. Um, we basically worked with the team that we had. We did it kind of as a side project. Um, we didn't really have, uh, we kind of were doing it under the radar actually, um, which was <laughs> kind of cool, because it's a little bit challenging to get buy-in. Um, so, but uh, once, we, once we actually kind of proved what we could do, and we, we, did, we did things in small uh, segments to kind of build up the, um, the support. Um, so essentially what we did was we, we kind of did some proof of concepts within the organization to try things out that were uh, build smaller mobile device friendly websites. We built our skills around um, doing things, creating responsive design, using Twitter bootstrap, things like that. And then once we kind of felt comfortable, we, we decided to take the plunge and do it on our, on our main website. Um, at the time it was about 3,000 web pages. Um, Part of the upgrade was actually to scale that back. Uh, we just had so much garbage out there. Um, we had stuff that was just not relevant, that people didn't trust, hadn't been updated in years. And um, so another part of this project, which is really behind the scenes, was to clean up the content and to establish web governance in the organization and to get departments who actually own the content and know about um, the information, that know it best, to update it and keep maintain it over time. So it's one thing to launch a new website and make it all shiny and great. It's another thing to maintain it over time. And so um, part of what we've done as well is make sure that we can sustain this going forward to make sure that departments are contributing and updating, refreshing their content every 30 to 60 days to identify individuals throughout the organization that we can work with, that we can um, teach how to maintain a, a good web presence and to kind of keep the momentum going. So um, those are some of the things you probably won't hear about. You won't see that on our site, but I, I think I'm really proud of what the team did and kind of where the organization's going. And, and so I'm just kind of excited to, to share that. So um, <clears throat> one of the other things we did is we redesigned our logo as well as redesigned the website. Um, one of the cool things about the logo is it was developed by students. So uh, about six months ago, they had a contest to basically create a new CPS logo, and they went out to a lot of elementary and high schools and had students draw concept designs for the logo. Uh, they ended up choosing two designs from two different students and merging them together to kind of come up with this new this new logo. I don't know if you remember our old logo. It was basically a rectangular, very um, simple CPS. So this one is a little bit more friendly. Um, and we're kind of excited to, to tell that story too. So, um, <clears throat> so our device now works on mobile devices, um, which is pretty cool. Uh, one of the things we noticed about a year ago was that about 30% of our web tra traffic was coming in through mobile devices. So we have Google Analytics tracking our, our website and we're monitoring the usage and we noticed that a lot of people um, are using devices, iPhones, tablets, and so we thought, well, that's, that's a third of our population, and that number is going to continue to climb over time. Like That, is, that number is not going to go down, right? More, more and more people are using these devices um, to, to find information. And so we wanted to basically build a site where, or unlock our information to make it available to people when they need it, where they need it, whenever they need it. And um, if you think about parents, really our, our website is geared towards giving information to parents. Um, a lot of parents are using their devices to, to find out what's for lunch tomorrow for their students, what after school programs are available. Maybe they're doing it in the parking lot while they're waiting for their son to come out from, the, from school, or maybe they're doing it on the train on their commute home. Um, they're, most, most of them are not doing it at a, at a desktop PC anymore. And so 
we thought it was really important to be able to support their needs when they need it, where they need it. And that's another reason why we, we pushed really hard to make sure that the site worked on all these different devices. Um, so we launched August 21st. Um, there's a few stories about it, which is kind of cool. It's not every day the media actually features your website. Um, we want to give you a quick demo. I'm going to kind of get through it real quick, through the rest of the slides, and then we'll give a demo, and then we'll open it up for questions. Um, in terms of site usage, we get about, <clears throat> we've had about um, over a million page views, um, and um, so we, we're getting a lot of traffic. Half of our traffic is new visitors, and the other half is returning visitors. We kind of want to see that number kind of move, and, and we want to see a lot more people start returning to our site. Um, so I mean, just some stats for you guys. These are, these are the last 30 days. Um, we also have real-time stats, which is kind of cool, so we can see um, when stories are published, you know, who's looking at what, and we can kind of rank our pages. Um, in terms of the content flow, what we've done is we've established a new role within the organization called a web content author. And we've identified two people in each department to assume that role. And they're responsible for contributing and maintaining the content for their, for their subject matter areas. Um, and then they work with the communications team to, um, so, to basically publish that information. Um, once it's reviewed and uh, communications team is fine with it, it comes to the web team. That's our team here. And we actually build out the pages and, and publish them on the site. So um, that's, the, that's the model we've set up. And that's basically our web governance model. Um, <clears throat> another key feature that we've had on our site is, uh, for those of you who have used our old version of the site, you may have noticed it's really hard to find stuff. Um, we've improved our search. So we've basically built uh, Google search into our site now. And we're indexing all our content through Google. Um, and we found that a lot, it's, it's a lot easier and more reliable to find what you're looking for on the site. Um, and then um, <clears throat> we made it mobile device friendly using Twitter Bootstrap. I mentioned that before. Um, one of the other cool things we did was we launched the site with zero downtime. So we essentially didn't have to shut our site down to make the flip. Um, we did it one Thursday night. We were just kind of, it was, it was the three of us. We were... Uh, we were all set and ready to go, and we kind of made the switch. And we were watching in real time Google Analytics to see how many users were on the site. We had about 400 at the time, um, so they got a nice little surprise, like when they refreshed their page. <laughs> all of a sudden, whoa, what happened? So um, that was kind of cool, and uh, we didn't expect, we didn't think we'd be able to do that. Um, that kind of came late in the game. We were expecting at least like a few hour outage or whatever, but um, we were able to build the site in a way that we didn't have to have any downtime. So. That's kind of cool. Um, what's going on next? So some other things that we're doing is we're, we're upgrading our back end. So our site is built on SharePoint. You might not know that if you looked at it, um, but that's our content management system. Uh, is it the perfect content management system? Probably not. Uh, if we had to do it all over again, would we choose it? Maybe not. Um, but that's what we had. And we didn't want to spend any more money um, investing in a new one. And we also didn't really have the right open source CMS. And we um, didn't want to introduce new risks. So we ended up staying with what we had. Um, and now we're going to upgrade. So um, we're doing that. Uh, we also want to bring in a, a number of other websites. So we're, we're, our web strategy really is to consolidate all of, our, all of our information into one place, which is our CPS Daily website. Today, we have a number of departments who have spun off their own website, kind of on their own. They've hired a, comp they've hired a company to come in and like develop content, and they're hosting it externally from our current site. And from our perspective, that just makes it really hard for our users to find what they need. Um, so imagine you're doing a Google search, and you might end up on this site over here, and it looks totally different. And then you go to another CPS site, and it's over here, and it's a different URL, and it looks different. Um, we're trying to bring all of those things into alignment, and it's really hard. Um, but now that we've established that web content author role and we have um, monthly meetings with the, the departments, we're, we're basically um, getting them to uh, contribute and kind of bring that knowledge that's spread all over the organization and spread all over the internet kind of into one model and giving our community and our parents a single starting point to find all information CPS. Um, if you think about a big brand like Coke or something, Coke doesn't have 10 different websites with 10 different looks and feels, right? 
Um, so we're, we're kind of looking to change that model. And then we're here um, showing you what we have, but we know it's not perfect. And we really would love for you guys to suggest if you have ideas to make it even better. Um, let us know. We're very open. Um, we are always willing to look at new ideas and we want to make this the best it can be for the city of Chicago and for our parents. And I know you guys all have great ideas, so feel free to share with us. <clears throat> so um, before I get into questions, I'm just going to do a real quick demo and show you some of the key features and then, and then we can open it up. All right. <clears throat> All right, so one of the things we wanted to do with our home page was highlight the search capabilities that we've invested in. Um, Google essentially, most of our users were using Google to find stuff anyway. So for us, it made a lot of sense for us to just use Google because we noticed that most people were doing that anyway. We also really like some of the features that are built in. So um, the nice thing about Google is you've got autocomplete um, features and then you also have this idea of, of highlighting some favorites. Um, so now what we're finding is people can find what they're looking for just a lot easier. Um, <clears throat> A lot of people weren't using our search before, so we made it right in your face, front and center. Uh, we kind of took the Google approach and said, like, here's our search, use it. And we've noticed a, a pretty big uptick in, in the usage there. Another thing we did was um, tag our content on our site in a number of different ways. Um, one way we did it was by age group. So imagine you're a parent and you have a child who's about to enter kindergarten. <laughs> So now what we did was we've tagged all the content related to that age group and made it easily accessible from our website. So we don't make a parent have to navigate and search and hunt and peck for that content. Now we've made it really easy to find um, by doing that. Um, so you know if, if you're entering kindergarten, we can find out about eating healthy at school, maybe some tips for uh, the grade levels, um, what are the health requirements, um, things like that. Maybe you have another child who's entering high school and you need to know what you need to know to get ready for high school. So we've got that as well. Um, <clears throat> some of the other tags that we have or what we call topics um, are listed here. So we've got, we've got a, a number of topics that we've tagged our content by. We also have it by audience. So we have content specific to their community, um, specific to families, specific to staff and students. And then I already talked about the grade levels. So, um, those are some cool features. And then um, basically what we tried to do is make the most, the best content, the focus. So like I said before, when we had 3,000 pages, it's really hard to sift through all that and find the good stuff. Um, so what we did was we made the good stuff easy to find and the bad stuff hard to find. Um, <laughs> you can still find it. There's still some pages out there that are old but we've got an alert on the top of the page, very much like Wikipedia does. When you go to a page that's out of date, it'll tell you at the top, um, so you'll know what you're getting into. Um, there are still departments that have not updated their content. We're working with them to get them to update their content, but not everybody's um, on board yet. So um, if you're navigating their site and you see that, you'll, you'll know why. Um, but really, we, the way we did this was we basically did a content audit of all 3,000 pages on the site. And then we developed a content priority list. Um, so we had some focus groups and we went out and asked parents like, hey, what are you looking for? What's the most important thing to you that you need to, to, to find on our site? And they told us. We also used Google Analytics to see what people were looking at. And we kind of merged the two together to come up with what, we, what was a content priority list. And that's how we decided um, what some of these items are here on the site. So, um, Another thing that we did was we built a district calendar, which is basically a central place for all event information for the entire district, all in one place. And we distributed that editing capability out to all the departments. So now they are the ones that are contributing what events they have coming up. Um, they don't need to work with the web team anymore. Essentially, we built them in a little interface where they key in their events and publish it, and then it's live on the site. And we don't have to do anything. Um, a nice cool feature about this is you can subscribe to our calendar from your mobile device. So let's say there's a bad weather event tomorrow or something and school's going to be closed. 
if you're subscribed on our calendar and we post an event on our site, it should show up on your device automatically. Um, so that's kind of cool. Um, <clears throat> and um, something you can't see, but um, something we did for our staff was we built an apps directory. So there's tons of applications throughout the district. Right? Um, and there was really no single place to get to that stuff. And so we really like what Google did with, if you've ever been to the Google page where they've got a list of all their little apps with icons and a short description, we essentially built that for our staff so they have a single starting place to get to all the systems they need um, very easily. And that's what you'd see under the staff page. It's not accessible to the public, but when you're on the CPS network, you can see that. Um, and we found that to be really helpful for people to, to find what they're looking for, to find links to applications that they need to use on a daily basis. I mean, those are some of the key features that we've built into the site um, that are new. Um, so now I just kind of want to open it up to questions and see what you guys think. Yes? Just as a parent, can I ask um, what your plan is for the parent portal? Do you bring that? Because that's obviously a place that we go a lot. Yes. So the parent mm -hmm. portal is a separate system outside of this. Um, the team that owns that is not our team, but there is a team that's working on that. Um, and they are looking to completely upgrade that, to completely redo that system. Um, for those of you that don't know what the parent portal is, it's a place for parents to go and log in and set notifications um, about their child's attendance and grades and get text alerts and things like that. So it's a cool system. It's not mobile device friendly, unfortunately. Um, and one of our strategies at the moment is to enable all of our systems to be mobile device friendly. Um, so as they're looking to replace that system, one of our key requirements is to be mobile first, to be, to be able to be responsive and run on any device. Um, but that's not happening anytime soon. It definitely won't happen this school year. Um, yeah. Yes? Is there any plan or to integrate all the individual school websites into CPS so that they're more regulated? Or like, I guess on a broader scale also, how do individual schools decide when and who to update their websites? Yes. So um, the first question was, <laughs> yes, good, good. I uh, love it. Um, so the first question you had was, how do I find information about schools? Um, we do have that on our site. So if you go under the schools area, um, we have a school locator, which um, is something Derek talked about, where you can search for a school by name or address. Um, we also have the ability to search for a school by name. So we have a school profile page for every school in our district, which I'll, I'll show you one. So does anyone have a favorite school they want to highlight? Ebinger. Ebinger? Okay. <clears throat> so this is the school profile page for Ebinger. So you'll see there's contact information, there's um, test score information. Um, you can look at what programs are available, what admissions requirements are there. Um, we also have like progress reports listed by year. So these are these are available for every school. You'll also notice at the top that each school has a link to their own website that they manage separately on their own. And I think that's kind of where you're after is like um, the other the second part of your question is like how do we get schools to update their website and who do they decide makes updates to their website? Every school does it a little bit differently. There's not a lot of consistency. Um, it's usually up to the school principal. Some schools have really active and robust websites. Other schools have almost nothing. Um, it really all depends on the principal and also the technology people at the school. Um, sometimes parents get involved and build the web presence for the school. Um, a good example of that would be Waters. If you, if you, if you know about Waters on the north side, um, there was a group of parents that basically got together and built out the Waters website, and it's pretty good. Um, We've provided guidelines to the schools on how to manage a good web presence and things like that. But um, it's really up to the school on whether they, you know, how, how well they, they manage their web presence. So, yes? You mentioned that you're using SharePoint as your content management system. Yes. Is there anything special about SharePoint, the way it's running right now, that you wish was different? That you, you know, like, is there, are, there, are there things you could, simply couldn't do because SharePoint got in the way? Yes. 
So SharePoint's backend to the content management system is not user friendly, meaning if you're a content person and you just want to build a page, it's somewhat challenging to use that backend to publish your content. We have a team of experts that kind of have worked those worked out the kinks. But one of the things that's limited us using SharePoint is to distribute our content authoring out to the departments so that they can manage their own content and we don't have to be involved. SharePoint makes that too difficult to do. We could never do that very well. So one of the things we really like in a content management system, which we don't have today, is the ability to update content easily. I don't know if some of you have used WordPress or something. I mean, it's a challenge probably with every content management system out there. I don't know if there's really a good way to do it, but um, we're very open and we're one of the other things we did with this project is we've eliminated a number of hooks that we've had or dependencies on SharePoint so that if in fact we decide to move to a new CMS, we can do that a lot easier. So the fact that we got rid of SharePoint search and replaced it with Google search, we've eliminated our school profile data within SharePoint and moved it off to its own separate hub. Um, we've done some things to kind of prepare ourselves for a move down the road. So we don't have plans to go just yet, but we're we're definitely weighing our options. Yes? So are the pages individual HTML files with like static data, or is it like a template that's run through an API? And so it's, the site's all dynamic, and it's all run, it's all template driven, so we have a number of page layouts that we've defined, and then the data is um, stored, depending on what data you're looking at, um, stored in various databases uh, using SQL Server. So is SharePoint just a, I guess I'm unfamiliar with it, I guess it's not really, but is it kind of just a way to edit content, but it's not like a data store? Yeah, it's like a it's a yeah, it's a way to basically edit content in a consistent way. So like build out pages in a consistent way. So you establish a page layout of what a page could look like, and then it's really like filling out a form. You fill in all the data points, and then it creates the page for you. Yes. How many languages is this available? So the site right now is using Google Translate which is a machine translation, which is horrible, it's not great, but that's what we could do in a short amount of time. Um, so it, it supports as many languages as Google Translate supports. We know that it's not great. We know that it could be better. Um, the challenge for us has been the, making the investment to, to buy, buy something that supports multiple languages, and then making the investment to make sure that content is translated across those multiple languages. If you think about a web page, um, you have it in, written in English and you want it in three different languages, you need to make sure that you have someone who can edit it or, or translate it into those three languages and then keep them in sync. So if a page is updated a month after it's published, you also need that translation to happen on the other pages as well. And what a lot of times what happens is that it gets out of sync. So you'll have the English version more up to date than the Spanish and the and the other language versions, Polish version or whatnot. So that is a real challenge. SharePoint's not very good at that. Um, it's not very good at that. I know that's one of their key features that they talk about, but we haven't found that it's um, a model that works for us. Yes. Yeah. Could you? Uh, I mean, as long as you put some focus on making it mobile first, could you? Yes. 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 So yeah, there we go. Um, so that's so that's kind of cool. Yeah, that's. And then for some of those, I mean, what was the hardest thing to get working on mobile that you're now? The hardest thing on mobile, what do you guys think? Well, I think really the hardest thing was uh, setting up the templates in SharePoint and making them work across all of the browsers that we need to support. One of the biggest challenges for us as a school district is we have very old technology out in the schools. Um, some computers which are still running IE7, IE8 from five, six years ago. And it, I see people like curdling, like that's how we feel too. Um, 
So what we've had to do is we've had to like backwards engineer parts of our site to work on those really old systems. And it wasn't great, but we've got it to work. Um, and now there's a big push to get updated browsers out in the schools. Um, one of the really cool things about the website is it increased the awareness of mobile devices and modern browsers, the need for them. And so now there's this big push to get um, browser updates across the entire district, uh, which was something that people weren't thinking about prior to launching. So we've really increased the awareness. We kind of, I don't know if there's, a, there's some IT groups that aren't too happy with us at the moment. <laughs> kind of, you know, they're, they're not too happy with the web team. But uh, for us to take steps forward, we had to kind of let go of the past. And, you know, they're now kind of catching up. So um, were you able to capture any metrics about uh, the, the sort of usability or abandonment rate of, of your users before the uh, redesign versus after the redesign since you kind of completely changed the, the entire navigation flow of how you're using it? Yes. We have that data. Mm -hmm. In Google Analytics, we haven't looked at it that closely, um, and it's definitely something we should look at. Yeah. Um, I, I don't. I'm not sure what what it looks like, but I'd love to check it out. But we should probably do that. Yeah. I know there's some folks in the back that have been waiting. Okay, so it's kind of similar to that. I was curious if you guys have seen an increase in mobile users since the redesign, or are you just better serving the mobile users you already have? We've seen about a six percent increase since August. So we're kind of in the 36%, 37% range now. One of the things we've noticed, though, is when we go to real-time stats in the evening, almost all of our traffic in the evening is mobile devices, um, tablets or, or phones. During the day, it's people that are, like, sitting at a computer or a big screen, and they're, it's usually, like, you know, 60% desktop, 30 40% mobile. So um, it depends on the time of day that we've noticed that where the, where the information or where the usage changes. Yes, Josh. Um, so this is more for like the home page, but the search is great for the longer term stuff, or, but um, how are you managing short term things like the example would be like right now the school actions guidelines, which I know someone can mention on Twitter that it's difficult to find, but like um, how are you keeping track of like those short term things that are only like a month long and making sure that those are able to be found? Yeah, so um, on our homepage, we have basically this bar down here of basically current events, things that people are looking for, so like LSC elections and things like that. Um, you mentioned school guidelines. If you just come out here and you type in school guidelines, you should be able to find it really quickly. We have a quick link that will take you there. Um, we don't have an icon for it on our homepage, uh, but, it, but it is pretty easy to find if you just search for it. If you, yeah, if you search for it, yeah. yeah. Um, I, the department that is responsible for that is the one that basically is, decides how they market it. It's not really the web team's call to like market one versus the other. Um, so, but we can certainly show people how to find it if, if they're looking for it. Also, the spotlight can be used for it. Yeah, so let me show you the spotlight. So the spotlight's this like scrolling story, um, our carousel our, um, on the top of the page. And these are typically, you know, highlights that we want to talk about, such as application period opening and things like that. Chris? Are you going to do any user testing for the site? Yes, we would love to do user testing. Um, so we did a focus group before we launched. Now we want to do some focus groups after we launched. Um, with parents and with community members um, to, to just kind of understand how they're using the site, if they're comfortable with the changes that we've made, because it's entirely different than what it was before. And we want to use that to make the site better. And kind of one of the things that's important is for us to adjust our content priority list based on the time of year and based on what our users need. And so the only way for us to know that is by asking them. Um, so I think that's in the plans for the future. We don't have a date scheduled or anything, but we're definitely looking for feedback. For all the parents in the room, if you want to share your thoughts with us, please let us know. I'm happy to give you my email or if you want to reach out to us that way. Um, yes? Uh, so just kind of following up on that point, I don't know if it's changed since I looked, but uh, one thing that is gone from the redesign is any way to digitally contact CPS. 
Okay. Facebook and Twitter. So, which at least last they saw just a bunch of phone numbers. Oh, you're looking for an email address? Yes, there's no email address or. Yeah, that's yeah. Um, <laughs> so uh, I can reach out to our communications department. Uh, this is their page. So we talked about like distributed ownership by department. They own the contact us page. They're the they're, they're basically the contact point. Uh, we can find out what it would take to get an email address on the site. Um, but yeah, that's a really good observation. Yes. Along those lines, so that web content author position, what sort of experience or um, background do you look for in that kind of position? Um, for the departments that well, are. That, yeah, I mean, that's just sort of, sort of a role that I'm not familiar with. It seems like something we also need where I am for our SharePoint um, management. So, what sort of person do you put in that role? Do they come from the communications? Are they just a, somebody on a team that. So uh, if we use the example of, like, say, early childhood, the early childhood office, um, we're looking for someone on the early childhood office who knows about all the programs available to parents and who can coordinate getting that information and putting it in a digestible format that's mobile friendly onto the website. So it's a, it's, it's a coordination role. They don't need to know HTML. They don't need to know how to publish on the web. They just need to know how to collect the information from the subject matter experts in their department, and then work with the communications team to draft it up in a way that is um, uh, simple to understand and easy to publish, and that it also looks good on a mobile device. So um, one of the challenges has been for us with that role, um, and th that role has been identified by the chief of each department within the organization, so they've identified two people across the organization that said, these are my two web content authors. And then what we do is we meet with them every four to six weeks and give them guidelines on how to build out their web presence, how to manage their content, how to keep it up to date, um, how to work with us to kind of do that. Um, so <clears throat> um, that's that's basically the role in general. Um, I don't know. Did that did that answer your question? Okay. Yeah, definitely. So it sounds like <clears throat> it's a non-technical role. Yeah, I was gonna say for us it could probably be a you know part time within a position to start in some departments, but not in all. So. Yeah. But non-technical. Yeah. The other thing we ask of those people is to review their content every thirty to sixty days, and we have an alert message that goes out to them that tells them when they need to review their pages. Um, so every page that we we build basically has a person attached to it now that wasn't the case before and they get nagged when they don't keep their content up to date um, and at some point when they pass a certain threshold then we put up the little annoying <laughs> message at the top that says this content is really out of date like you know you may not trust this um, we don't want people to get into that position but sometimes they do Yes, there. Uh, so you mentioned earlier on in, in your talk about the fact that this is kind of like an under the radar project for a while. So I'm curious how you brought it above radar, and what was that sort of situation like? How did you say, "Here's a website we made," or like, how did you how did you uh, bring that up to the powers of be? Yes. Um, so what we've been doing was we've been doing small bits of the site on kind of side projects and things. And then at some point, we had four or five different little features that we really liked and wanted to combine. Um, and at about that same time, which was in the spring, we had some leadership changes in the organization. And um, you know, we had been kind of focused on doing this project and um, launching it, but we didn't really have sponsorship. As soon as that leadership change happened, the person who uh, it came in basically said like, what are we doing about the website? The website needs a change. And then it turned out that we had just been, happened to be working on this stuff. So we ended up presenting our prototype to the cabinet um, one morning, um, to Barbara, our, our CEO, and her 40 uh, chiefs. And they all loved the idea. We kind of did that trick where we did where we like resized the screen. <laughs> and we heard a lot of oohs and ahs, and everyone was like, wow, you know, this is really cool. And from that point forward, like we had the right people supporting it. And then we, it was just a matter of kind of carving out the time and, and dedicating the time to, to do the rest of the work. So 
Um, it was a, a little bit dicey for a while, and there were some points along the way that we weren't even sure if this was ever going to make it out to the public. Um, but we knew that we were getting better at doing building responsive websites and kind of doing it on a smaller scale and kind of building our skills. And at the same time, we were building support within the organization to kind of um, get people behind us. So, yeah, that's kind of how it happened. Um, and it, we, uh, you know, in a lot of ways, if the timing was right, and um, we were able to impress the right people at the right time, and then they basically gave us the go ahead, and we ran with it, and you know, we're pretty happy with where we're at, and I think they're pretty happy with it as well. I mean, one of the things, I think we're probably one of the first school districts in the country to have a mobile device friendly website. There are some others, but um, they're smaller. Um, so that's kind of cool too. Like the race to be first was, was also motivation for us to get it done as quickly as we could. So, but I mentioned earlier, like it was a side project. It wasn't our dedicated jobs. Like we were all kind of doing this on the side. We still have our day-to-day -day jobs. We have to support um, tons of different websites and support all the initiatives that are going on at CPS throughout the year. So um, it, it slowed us down. Like I think if we had a dedicated team and we were dedicated to this project just by itself, we could have done it faster. We could have done it better. Like we just didn't have that luxury. So kind of had to do it on our own. Do you think you've kind of gotten ahead of it now that you've launched it? Like is, is your life better now than it was two months ago? Well, maybe. The day-to-day -day stuff, right? Are you, is this website made your guys' jobs easier? I think it's made it easier in some ways and harder in others. Because now people see what we can do, and now everybody says, oh, we want to work with the web team, right? And that's great. <laughs> but there's only a few of us. Like, you're being, here Here we are. <laughs> um, there's, a, there's a few more, but they're not here. Take a separate it's, a small, <laughs> it's a small group. Like, it's not a big group. We have a lot of stuff going on. Um, so we're really excited that now there's an awareness about managing the web that wasn't a priority at CPS until we launched. So that's, I think, really cool. We're kind of setting the, the there's a cultural shift happening with information sharing in the organization that this kind of was the catalyst for. Um, so I mean, that's pretty cool. I think that's cool. Um, we've talked you know, a lot about data in the past and kind of maintaining it. Um, CPS hasn't done a good job of that in the past. and our king, I think we're moving in the right direction. Are we perfect? No. We've got a lot of work to do, but um, there's some really great people that are doing some great things, and like the fact that we're here presenting, I'm, I'm, I'm just excited to kind of tell you what we're up to, and we're continuing to do more things too, so um, yeah. Okay, cool, well that's, that's great, I think. Uh, well, we can, if you guys can stick around maybe, uh, if people want to kind of continue this conversation, but I think maybe we'll switch gears to the rest of the, of the evening. Uh, so thanks again, uh, James. <laughs>